Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. When we look in Psalm 115, from the verse number 12, Psalm 115, it says, The Lord has been mindful of us. In this month, the Lord will be mindful of you. He will take notice of your situation. He will take notice of your cry. He will take notice of the prayer that you have been offering in the closet. The Lord has been mindful. This month, He will bless you. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless the house of Harvest Chapel. Let me hear somebody give a shout to the Lord. He has been mindful of us. He has been my his mind is full of us and the next verse verse 13 of the same psalm 115 he says he will bless them that fear the lord and i like the last part he says both great and small so wherever you are there is a blessing for you whether your name is recognized by men or not whether your situation is appreciated by men or not whether you are small or great he will bless you and in verse 14 it says that and this is a prophetic declaration i am making that in this 11th month of the year may jehovah increase you more and more and more and more and more may it not just be you may it be your children may it be your children's children may it turn out well for them may the situation change in your favor may the report change in your favor because the word of god says let every man be a liar but let jehovah be true and the word of god says that with men it is not possible but not with god for with god all things are possible the Lord will increase you out of nothing he will make you something out of a nobody he is going to make you a somebody let me hear somebody shout yes and then the 15th verse it says that oh my brother my sister my friend remember that you are blessed of the lord no matter what any man says god says that he has blessed you put your hands together for the lord give him a shout of blessing 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 you are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth and everything that there is in it. You know, my friends, when we praise God only when things are going the way we want them to go, then we are not acknowledging His Lordship. But when in the midst of calamity and difficulty and affliction, we are still able to lift up our hands and say our god he reigns he is the champion he is the ruler he is king he is the captain of our ship then we confuse the enemy then we confuse the naysayers because we lift up the name of our king and the bible tells us the gods of this earth they are mere gods those who made them they are like them but the god that we serve he is the god who is the god of all flesh let me hear somebody give a shout and a clap of praise to the king of kings and the lord of lords lift up your two hands if you can please father this morning our hearts are open we say that 
bless us in a way that only you can bless us show us that you are indeed the champion and you are the one who turns impossibilities into possibilities i bring every spirit under the control and the operation and the direction of the name of jesus i declare that your people will be refreshed strengthened stand up to rise and serve you and let it be that the purpose for which you've gathered us today will be fully accomplished in jesus name amen this morning i want to speak on the subject walking in the blessing of abraham under our monthly theme actualizing the blessing of abraham when you actualize something it means that you are bringing it to the present hallelujah it means it's no longer a story my prayer is that this month the blessing of abraham will not be a tale or a story that we tell it will be an experience that we have and when you are blessed it means that you are in a place of advantage when you are blessed you are happy when you are blessed you are comfortable to be blessed is to be empowered to prosper and to increase my prayer is that this month for the rest of this year and for the rest of our lives because of the covenant that abraham made with god may you be empowered to prosper may you be empowered to increase may the decreasing end may the loss end may the pain end may the sickness end may the weakness end may the disease end because you have a covenant hallelujah and I am looking forward to seeing men and women, young men and young women, old men and old women who are not going to talk about the good old days. They will talk about the current good days. Hallelujah. Because God, he moves from glory to glory. Hallelujah. And our lives are dependent on him. When you look in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, verse 28, verse 29 trying to situate our subject of walking in the blessing of abraham the bible tells us that as many of you as have been baptized into christ have put on christ then it goes on it says there's neither jew nor greek there's neither born nor free there's neither male nor female for ye are all one in christ jesus and then verse 29 it says and if you are christ then are you abraham's seed and because you are abraham's seed that means that you are heirs according to the promise hallelujah it means that the blessing of abraham you can track it down abraham isaac jacob all the way to jesus christ and then because we are christ we also then are connected to the blessing of abraham so when you read anything about the blessing of abraham don't think that it is an old testament fable or tale but the blessing of abraham we are entitled to it because it is through that lineage that christ also came and he signed the covenant with his blood and so every blessing of abraham is also our blessing but there is something which is different between a potential and then what you actually experience so knowing about the blessing of abraham is different from experiencing that blessing my prayer is that we will move from just having a head knowledge about the blessing of abraham to the point where we actually experience that blessing and abraham was a very 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 blessed man hallelujah when we look in um, genesis chapter 12 the one that we read from verse 1 to verse 3 there is a sevenfold blessing of abraham 
And if you break it down, you just, it says that the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country from your kindred, from your father's house, into a land that I will show you. This month, may God show you something new. Hallelujah. May God do something new for you this month. May God bring about a major shift for you. You are tired of counting coins, playing around with pink notes, juxtaposing one pink note after the other, calculating when you take one church or and when you join another one. May you come to the place of blessing. Hallelujah. So get out of that mindset. That is where it begins. Get out of that mindset. Get out of that, 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 that way of thinking. That as for me, I will only be there to receive things from people. You must also get to the point where you can also give to others. Hallelujah. So it says get out of your, 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 your familiar place. And then it says, one, I will make of you a great nation. May God make a great nation out of you. Hallelujah. May he make a great nation out of you. And then number two, he says, I will bless you. It means I will empower you to prosper and to increase. This month, may you receive empowerment to prosper and to increase. Empowerment to defeat poverty. Empowerment to defeat any kind of weakness in your life. He says, I will bless you. I will empower you to prosper and increase. Then he says, I will make your name great. When your name is mentioned, it will be associated with the great. Hallelujah. And that is because inside of you is a covenant. And that covenant is sealed by the blood of Jesus. Then he says that you will also be a blessing. That means that when people see you, they will thank God for your life. They will not avoid you. They will not dodge you. Because they know when they see you, you will be a blessing to them. And I want to encourage those in church who are a blessing to people, continue to be a blessing to them. Hallelujah. It's a grace God has given to you. And givers, they will never lack. When you continue to be a blessing, you continue always to be a blessing. That is why from, I don't know, historically, maybe from the time of the depression, you find out that the developed countries, they are always supporting the developing countries. But they get richer. And I don't know where we get. When you are a blessing, you become more blessed. Hallelujah. And you see that before we close. And then verse 3. He says that I will bless those that bless you. That means you'll be an instrument of blessing. And as for those that curse you, I will curse them. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Don't take vengeance on anybody. God will deal with that person. If anybody steps on your toes, just, you know, rub your toes with rub. And leave the vengeance to God. Hallelujah. Because even if you step on the guy's toes with all your legs, you will still not be satisfied. But when God deals with a person, that will be enough. Hallelujah. So if today you are thinking of taking vengeance on somebody who has crossed your path by mistake or consciously, let the person go. It's God who cares those who curse you. And then he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth. May we have some blessed families in church. May we have some blessed children in church. May we have some blessed grandchildren in church. Somebody say amen. I believe that for us to walk in the blessing of Abraham, we also need to understand that there are certain distances, the sevenfold blessing. There are three major dimensions of the blessing of Abraham. Abraham was a very healthy man. Hallelujah. For you to be able to give birth at the age of 100, you must be a healthy person. Hallelujah. Without using any of the products that are on the market. Which I cannot mention here. If a hundred years you are able to give birth without any, any chemical assistance, 
you must be a very heavy, healthy person. I am praying that we'll have healthy people in church. Anybody here that there's any symptom of disease, something unusual taking place in your body, I apply the blessing of Abraham into that situation and I reverse it. I declare good health for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And then also, if you are if you are walking in the blessing of Abraham, it is a blessing of long life. Abraham was 175 years old when he died. Hallelujah. He passed the blessing on to Isaac. Isaac was 180 years. He passed the blessing on to Jacob. Jacob was 147 years. I am declaring a blessing of long life for you. Hallelujah. May you live long enough not only to see your children, but also your children's children to the third generation and to the fourth generation. May it be well with you. May the sickness that killed your father not kill you. May the sickness that stopped your mother not stop you. May the sickness that killed your brother or your sister be far away from you because of the blessing of Abraham, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. Then when you look in Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 and verse, especially verse 2, the Bible says, Abraham went out of Egypt and his wife and all that they had and lot with him. And then verse 2, it says that, and Abraham was very rich. The third dimension of the blessing of Abraham is wealth. Hallelujah. May we have some very rich people in church. Not very rich to bluff. Not very rich to show off their riches. But very rich so that the kingdom of God will be established. So that we will build more churches. Have more missions. Feed more people. Put up more hospitals. Put up more schools. And declare the goodness of God. If you are rich, let me see you put up a temple. Let me see you buy a bus. Let me see you feed some hungry people. Because the blessing of Abraham is a blessing of wealth. But that wealth is for the sake of the kingdom let us see some rich people rising up not showing off their dress not showing off their new car not showing off the new house that they have but then investing into the north investing into the south investing into the sea into the into the east with the gospel saying that i have bought a bus i'm not asking for any money it should be used for the gospel god has blessed me so that i'll be a blessing the blessing of Abraham is a blessing of wealth but it's not a blessing for destruction it's a blessing to expand the kingdom of God let me hear somebody say yes it is amazing that even in this church and we are not a big church yet there are few people that God has blessed how do they front their, their wealth new house new car new dress new shoes when we take money for missions they bring moja to wait one city notes for that and sometimes what is even alarming is that some of these people who boast of their money when we are giving offering they don't even bring any offering they bring their empty hands and give air offering The blessing of Abraham, which is a blessing of wealth, is for the sake of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Sometimes the people we criticize, the religions we criticize, the denominations we criticize, when they become rich, they use their money for the church. There are people when they are old, 90 years, 95 years, 100 years, when they are making their will, they say that the balance of all my account, all the treasury bills that I have, I am assigning it to the church. That is the purpose of the blessing of Abraham. Ask yourself, 
the wealth that you have when the money enters your hand isn't it the next journey that you want to undertake if it is not dubai you want to go to america if it's on america you want to go to shanghai you want to go to bali you want to go somewhere exotic when we talk about harvest city you bring a pittance the blessing of abraham is to bring wealth but the wealth is for the expansion of the kingdom hallelujah the wealth is so that a dying soul somewhere a dying soul that cannot even take transfer from where they are even to the church a dying soul that cannot get medical treatment that cannot go to a school that dying soul will know that jesus has also died for him for him may there be a change of thinking in the body of christ maybe that is why god does not give wealth to some people because when they feel that they have given them he has given the world to they misuse it hallelujah 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 some of them when they get money they want to buy a, marry a second wife yeah in the church one in accra one in australia the blessing of Abraham is a blessing of wealth but for us to walk in that blessing my friends one of the things that we must understand is that Abraham learned the secret of patience he waited when you look in Romans chapter 4 from verse 17 to verse 25 even when we start from verse 20 he said against all hope he had hope when his body was even weak he kept rejoicing he had patience until the promise came to pass if we are going to walk in the blessing of Abraham my brothers and my sisters don't be impatient be actively patient god has said it i believe it it will come to pass it may be today it may be tomorrow it may be next year it may be next five years but i am waiting <coughs> and when i'm waiting i am not insulting the pastor when i'm waiting i'm not insulting the church when i'm waiting i'm not saying that the place that we are the spirit of god is not there the spirit of god is here hallelujah maybe some of you are watching you should be in church but you are sitting there abraham learned to wait he learned to wait when it, when he got the promise and we have promises the bible says that he was not weak in faith he considered not his body now dead when he was about a hundred years neither the deadness of sarah's womb verse 20 he staggered not may you not stagger at the promise of god 2019 is about to end don't shake Corista, don't shake hallelujah every state in your life that you are in if you are looking for a piece of good news you will get it if you are 30 years old you want to you, you want a testimony of somebody who married at 30 you will get if you are 40 years old you want a testimony of somebody who married at 40 you get if you are 50 years old you want a testimony of somebody who married at 50 years you will get wherever you are there is a miracle there is a testimony for you there so you have to learn to wait you are not the first person to get into that situation god has made provision for you wait for him that child will come wait that miracle will come wait hold on to the promise of god hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 verse 36 verse 39 the bible tells us something it tells us that look we must have confidence and there is a reward with your confidence every day have confidence every day that you meet is one day closer to your miracle for you every day 
day that Abraham woke up and he was holding his walking stick, it was a day of praising God because he knew that one more day and my promise is coming. I prophesied to somebody this morning, may there be a spirit of active patience because that is how Abraham was able to walk into his blessing. He had patience. He believed in God. The Bible tells us that he did not just stagger at the promise of God, but he believed God and he was persuaded. May you be persuaded. Hallelujah. By patience. When everybody is praising God, don't look at the person next to you and find out that she's got a wedding band and you say, because you've got a wedding band, that's why you're praising God. You to praise God because you don't have a wedding band. Yes. Hallelujah. She's praising God because he's wearing a new shoe. You to praise God that you are not wearing a new shoe. She's praising God because he's made her hair cornrow. Stylistic cornrow. You to praise God because your hair is quick, quick. She, God has blessed you. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Your miracle will not delay one moment more than the time that it should come. Let me hear somebody say yes. You are finishing the school. You are level 400. Nobody is on the scene. Don't worry. God will give you a miracle. Hold on to his promise. Abraham, I'm sure he had a lot of classmates. They gave birth much earlier than him. But when he was 100, he was so patient. I feel like telling somebody this morning, be patient. Be patient. Your situation is not out of the purview of God. He will come through. He will come through. He will come through. That is why he is a promise keeper. That is why he is the eternal I am. And everything is under his control. Somebody say amen. He said, let's go back and read verse 36 of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 39. It says, you have need of patience. But he said, during that patience, do the will of God. Don't be complaining and criticizing and memory. And looking for bad things in the church every church you go to if you want to see a bad thing you will see it. what you want to see you can see it yes even if i'm wearing a pink uh, i don't know a wine dress and you want to see it as white you will see it you will look and you find something white in what i'm wearing <laughs> hallelujah so he says that during that time do the will of god do the will of God. Do the will of God. Do the will of God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that somebody within the reach of my voice will embrace the blessing of Abraham by patience. Verse 39. For yet a little while. Go back to the other one. Verse 38. For yet a little while. And he that shall come will come yet a little while and she that must come will come hallelujah yet a little while your little while may be different from my little while my little while may be different from his little while his little while may be different from a little while but for each one of us is yet a little while let me hear everybody say yet a little while yet a little while you drive that car go for a driving license yet a little while you enter your own house yet a little while you have your own child yet a little while you have your own wife or your own husband yet a little while you get that job yet a little while you get that financial breakthrough but be patient put your hands together for the Lord somebody second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5 the bible tells us about a certain king and he says that that king in second chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5 second chronicles chronicles is in the old testament and he said and he sought god in the days of zechariah 
who had understanding in the visions of God. I'm giving you visions. And said, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. If you want to walk in the blessing of Abraham, my friends, serve God. Serve God. As long as he sought him, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought him, God made him to prosper. God speaking about Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 18 and verse 19 talking about him. He said that this Abraham who is my friend, there's a certain characteristic of him. Genesis chapter 18 verse 18 and verse 19. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19. He said, for I know him. I know him that he will command his children and his household after me. That means he will be committed to me. He will serve me and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. If we are going to walk in the blessing of Abraham, let's be like Abraham. Serve God well. Stop coming to church late. You respect your boss who is an unbeliever more than the king of kings and the lord of lords serve him well when you serve him well he will do you good they said abraham i know he will order his family they will go in the way of the lord and it is because i have a promise that he will become the father of many nations there is a promise hovering over your head there is a covenant hovering over your head but you bring it down by service hallelujah isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 he says if you are willing and you are obedient discipline your will to serve god hallelujah you cannot talk about enjoying the blessing of abraham without serving god and serving him seriously God is not an afterthought. God is not the dessert after the main meal. God is not the tea or the coffee that you drink. It is all about him. Let him come first. And let him be always the first. No matter what happens. When you do that, you open the door for you to enjoy the blessing of Abraham. Abraham served God all the days of his life. When it was convenient. When it was not convenient. He was serving God. Not because he wanted a boyfriend or a girlfriend. But because he knew that his future was locked in Jehovah. Don't come to church because of somebody. Don't come to church because you have a rendezvous with anybody. Don't come to church because, because, because you want to be seen in a new dress. Serve God in a way that God knows that he is a champion. Don't just sing out that he's a champion. Let him be the champion. If he is the champion, when service is starting at 10 o'clock, you'll be here at 9 30 because you are waiting for the champion. I speak to everybody here. May there be a change. May there be a shift. And you can do it. The reason you don't do it is that you don't want to do it. That is why when you have another appointment somewhere that you think is important, you'll be there 50 minutes before the time. And when the champion says, I have an appointment with you, you come if your friend is coming. You minister if you feel like it. We are talking about walking in the blessing of Abraham. Abraham took God seriously. Seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That is how all these things will be added unto you. There's no any other formula. Reach out for souls. Obey the word of God. Sermons have been preached here. Revelations, prophecies have been given. How many of us are committed to them? You've been in the church 10 years? But you still have a will of your own. If you decide that today I'll come when the sermon is starting, nobody will stop you. But one of these days, God will stop you. He will let you know that He is a champion. That is why somebody comes into the service with an open heart. Somebody comes into the church with an open heart, serving God, believing God. And not long, the person gets a breakthrough. And all you, you become, you are the leader of 
crit crit criticizes union in the church. You see everything that is wrong and nothing that is right. Somebody says, become the change that you want. The way you want everybody to do to serve God, become that. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one more thing. Abraham in, Galatia, in, in Genesis chapter 14, there was one secret of his blessing. The Bible tells us from verse 18. And I'll try and stop over there and continue another time. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. The Bible says that he went out to battle. And when he went out to battle, when he came back, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of the most high God. You'll find out that Melchizedek had no beginning, no end. He's a type of Jesus Christ. And then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, in verse 19. And he blessed him. And he said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20. And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thy enemies unto thy hand. May God deliver all your enemies into your hand. May he deliver them into your hand. This month, may he deliver all your enemies into your hand. May he make your enemies disappear. May they explode. May they become annihilated. May they not be able to stand the test of time. And then Abraham gave tithes of all. If we are going to walk in the blessing of Abraham, let's follow Abraham. Let us give tithes of all. Our time, our money, our talents, everything that we have, give a tithe of it. Hallelujah. You will position yourself to walk in the blessing of Abraham. He says that in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, verse 10, he says that we should honor the Lord. Are you honoring God? Are you honoring him with your substance? Are you honoring him with the first fruits of your increase? He has given you the breath. He has given you the strength. He has given you the wisdom. There are many people in this church. They are gifted in many ways. They don't tithe what they are gifted into the house of the Lord. Remember that Abraham, for him to walk in his blessing, he discovered the secret of tithing. And his grandson, Jacob, when he was running away from his brother in Genesis 28, the Bible says that he got that vision and then he said to God in Genesis 28 and in verse 22, that God, if you bring me back to my house again and keep me safe, then I'll serve you and then for everything that you give to me, I'll give you a tithe of it. And then in chapter 32 and verse 10, when he was going back to his house, he said that when I was living, I was one person, but now, made me a double band i am praying for somebody don't be deceived into thinking that you can benefit from the blessing of abraham without paying your tithes it is an act of obedience it's also an act of commitment and then it's an act of worship if god bless abraham when you pay his tithes god also bless you when you pay your tithes may there be men and women who will say that this is a time of grace so i'm not just giving 10 percent of my income i'm giving 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent because after all the source of that blessing is jehovah god may god grant us a revelation that revelation into how we can walk in the blessing of abraham and if we follow that revelation based on the word of god and as obedient as Abraham was, we will not only be blessed, but we will become a blessing. Amen. I want you to bow down your heads. As your heads are bowed down this morning, we are talking about walking in the blessing of Abraham. This blessing of Abraham is connected to the sacrifice of Jesus. You cannot walk in that blessing until Christ becomes yours. Until he is your savior and also your Lord. The Bible says that the God that we serve, he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. 
so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life as our heads are bowed down our eyes are closed i want to give an opportunity to somebody somebody who needs to connect to the blessing of abraham by receiving jesus christ as his lord and his savior you may be a good person at heart you may even belong to a church but i'm asking you is jesus the lord of your life is jesus the king of your heart is jesus your real master and your savior if you are not very sure then as our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed down i'm giving you an opportunity to connect yourself into the blessing of abraham through jesus christ our lord and our savior if this is your heart's desire you want to come to jesus you want to give him your heart today just slip up your right hand wherever you're sitting just slip up your right hand you don't understand these things that are being talked about but you want to come to jesus you want him to take control of your life you're tired of driving your life by yourself it's one disaster after another one mistake after another one tragedy after another you want to hand over the bills of your life to jesus christ the savior and the king if this is your heart's desire just slip up your right hand i want to pray for you just slip up your right hand i want to pray for you whenever jesus called people he called them publicly and if you've lifted up your hand just lift it high up don't be shy don't feel intimidated this is why god allowed you to come into the service today so that you will not live the same if you lifted up your hand why don't you stand up on your feet if you lifted up your hand why don't you stand up on your feet if there's anyone who lifted up your hand why don't you stand up on your feet i want to pray for you maybe you didn't lift up your hand and you want to stand up on your feet you want to give your all to him you want to surrender your all to him the songwriter says i surrender all to jesus you are not very sure and if today jesus shall come and the role is called up you're not very sure whether your name will be one of those names but this morning you can be sure of your final destination thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302 222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.